There, there's two uh, pretty giant stories uh, coming out of the WWE side. Uh, the Sasha and Naomi thing took another turn when they were suspended on SmackDown, and Michael Cole had to. He buried them. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't imagine. I mean, that that's definitely what was written for him to say because it is almost. We, I don't know if you saw Pat McAfee trying to like make faces like next to him. He was like he didn't really know what to do because uh, Michael Cole was burying them. They let, them. they let them down. Um, the, they went to, they, um, you know, it's funny because it's like, but it's, 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 um, I wouldn't have done it that way because again, like you buried them and it's, it's again, un, in most cases, the end result is they come back. Yeah. Okay. I'm not saying that that will happen here. And when they come back, you've buried them. You know, Austin was never the same as a draw after they buried him. I mean, he's over. He's a big star. And now I know it makes no difference now, 20 well, the, years later. The Rock, the Rock said that he took his ball and went home. Right. And when he came back a year later, he never got the drawing power close to the drawing power he had when he left. Okay. So even though people popped when he returned and everything, it took the edge off. And then, and um, K1 did the same with Bob Sapp right around the same time, you know, where, um, he, you know, he had a big thing in Europe and everything. And he was giant, giant draw, like, you know, like nobody's business. People wouldn't even understand. I couldn't even conceptualize it to people unless they were in that era. But, um, and when he came back, it was the same thing. And they both happened. I mean, I, you know, with about a year and I, both times I remember I'm going like, you idiots do not realize that, that you're going to bring them back because that's, what's going to happen. And they're not going to draw because you did this. And in the case of, it's the same thing. Like, Sasha comes back and it's kind of it kind of muffles them and it's just like you know you you don't have to do it that way but it's like you you know um you know I mean like I get like Vince is upset that they walked out and he's trying to you know I mean I get that and and you know whatever you know it's but it's like you didn't need to do that on television because it's 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 to your own detriment and I would have thought from Austin they would have learned but I also have learned that in rest, one of the things in wrestling that I have learned is that you can live through stuff and see what happens and you don't get it yourself. And and this is like the perfect example of it. And I think in some ways also Vince is like, yeah, they're not draws anyway. So what the fuck, right? I'll just bury them and they come back and they'll be, you know, they won't be super over, but or maybe it hurts and maybe it doesn't. But it's not like it's Steve Austin. And it's it's true. It's not like it's Steve Austin. I don't know. I think I think Sasha not being a giant draw is more on them than anything else. Because I I, I I don't understand why she's, she's not, not Steve. Aust she's not. Well, Steve she, Austin. no she's... no one is Steve Austin, but yeah. in that women's I mean, she, in that women's she, division, she, she, she should be. Yeah, I mean, she you know she could be a bigger star. I agree, she could be a bigger star, but um, you know whatever she um, you know I don't I don't know that this was the. I don't know that this was the fight to pick, but um, I mean, especially because, again, you come up with an idea. They come up with an idea. Your idea has to be better than theirs. Your idea is way worse. That's what makes it bad. If you came up with a better idea for them um, than they presented to you, then I could be go like, look, you know, you came up with a better idea and they're stubborn. But you came up with a fucking bad idea. Um, and then they said no. And I mean, and the other one, too, is. You know, I mean, Vince, Vince calmed him down and then the producers and it's just like, fuck, you don't re like these people don't know the like, how can people in wrestling after all these years not know the game? You know what I mean? It's yeah, like, but isn't that his MO? Isn't that how he positions those things so he doesn't have to be the bad cop? Of course it is. He's been doing that for 40 years. Yeah, I mean, but I it, can so I just see it as his own manipulation. Then, then of course it is. But, but then they. Yeah. Well, they they got mad at the producer, not realizing the producer is Vince's voice. I mean, it's just like I mean, I remember the first the first one I heard about this was in um, it's been in 83 um, and he had just you know, he was just starting his expansion. It was in St. Louis. Right. So um, Madison was doing a re, you know local promotion. Um, there was the NWA promotion that was, um, you know, the, the traditional promotion that, that Mushnick had bought out. And they were on, you know, KPLR wrestling at the chase, the traditional TV show, traditional time and everything like that. And, and you know, Geigel and those guys just 
you know, their TV was terrible. They stopped taping in St. Louis and they started sending in the Kansas City tapes, I think. Or maybe they were still taping in St. Louis, but they were putting on a shitty show and KPLR was dropping them. OK, they just looked just like, you know, the ratings were going down. They didn't know, you know, and everything. So so they were going to drop them. And but they wanted to keep wrestling. So Larry had started an independent and and Vince, you know, was going to come in and they had a meeting and the meeting was together. The the, the Ted Coppler, I believe it was. But it was one of the it was either Harold. You no, know, it was Ted because Harold was the one who originally um, did the wrestling deal. So Ted Coppler meets with um, Vince and Larry and he just goes, I got a great idea. You know, it's like Larry knows the market, you know, and all this and you've got the talent. So why don't you work together? And then they. Yeah, we'll work together. We partners in the operation. They all agree. And then Jim Barnett calls up Larry, you know, oh, by the way, Vin, you know, uh, we've been looking at things and we actually can't do this deal. So we can hire you, but you can't be a partner in, in St. Louis, you know, and it was just like, well, you know, Vince said what he said in front of the guy mm -hmm. to get the TV and and that's the game. Yeah. And that's always been, you know. You know, from JJ to John Laurinaitis to Jim Ross to all them, you know, all of these wrestlers. Oh, Vince loved me and Vince agreed with me. But that goddamn producer, that goddamn Jim Ross, you know, and it's just like we still in 2022, you don't see through this. And it was just like, all right, whatever. I've been actually dying to ask you this question, which is so the, the way that it comes across for when they walk out on Monday night, it was as if. This thing was presented, they didn't like this one thing, and they had it with this one thing. But this has got to be a tipping point thing for them, well, right? Well, certainly for Sasha. I don't know about Naomi, but for Sasha, because Sasha's always, you know, has issues. She was mad that Ronda got the WrestleMania spot, you know, in, instead of her, where they had, you know, it was planned right. for, for Sasha Banks and Charlotte Flair. We've known that for months. I wrote about it. Everyone got and moved then, down when Ronda came in. And she got moved down, and they gave her the tag belts as kind of like a concession because she got moved down. Um, but, okay, if you're looking at it from oh, Sasha, only Sasha, they lied to me, right? But Because they didn't know Ronda's going to want to come, you know, agree to come back you know, so soon after pregnancy, but Rhonda wanted to prove it because her mom did it. And also just, and they really, really wanted Rhonda at WrestleMania if it was at all possible because Rhonda's the bigger star, but to not understand that they picked Rhonda ahead of you for WrestleMania and get mad about it is, is like, that is also, I mean, yes. Did they tell you? Yes. Does that make you a good team player? no, you don't understand if you don't understand that Ronda's a much bigger star than you as on first appearance. I'm not even saying six months, maybe Sasha's bigger than Ronda six months in, but for WrestleMania for that show, there's not a doubt that that Ronda is a much bigger star than Sasha Banks in that spot. Ronda and Charlotte Flair is the bigger match. You know, you also have to kind of understand the big picture. And I mean, I could get being mad about it, but also it's like things happen in life and it's like, you know, okay, it didn't happen. Um, but this is why it happened. And from their perspective, it was a no brainer decision. It wasn't like they're shoving you down. It's like they had access to a mainstream star. So they go in there and they get the tag team titles as a concession. And then, you know, so it's one of those things, but if she like came up with a great idea and Vince shot it down, like, okay, she had a good idea Vince shot it down. Um, whatever. But you know, the, when the idea is what the idea was, you know, which was a match with, Nikki and Dewdrop, who they just beat in four minutes on television. And if we, if they had done that match on a pay-per-view, everybody would have just gone. This is the stupidest booking in the world. Look at them. They already beat them in a non-title match in four minutes. We, and they've done stuff like that in WWE before. And people go, that's stupid booking. So if you don't know, you know, it's like, if you don't know stupid booking, then that's another issue. And, and it is. So, Whatever. But I mean, I can see but from her standpoint. I mean, yeah, of course, she was mad coming in. You know, she started stop following people, people on social media and all that. And and look, they screwed them because by suspending them and taking their merchandise, so they don't even make merch money. So so um, by suspending them without pay, taking their merch money and freezing their contracts, they're screwed. In Naomi's case, she didn't you know, I don't know how long exactly she had on her deal, but she was negotiating a new deal. But the thing is, is that if she was unhappy, truly unhappy, um, and, so, you know, Sasha Banks is truly unhappy, you do what Moxley did. You know, you 
make sure everyone knows you're unhappy. Um, you know, you make sure everyone knows you're leaving somehow. But event, but the point is, is you leave. And then you go you, with whether you want to go to Japan and not work for a lot of money, but be, you know, be, a, you know, creatively fulfilled. You want to go to AEW. You can do it. Now they're sitting there and he's going to ice them for as long as he can. And they're going to have to go to court probably to stop being iced and get a release or threaten. And then it's AEW. And then you have to question, like, does AEW want Sasha Banks? And there's a part where you go, yes. But there's then there's the part of. I don't know. I, I mean, I would I would assume Tony would take her in a heartbeat. I would that would be my assumption. But if he didn't, it wouldn't shock it wouldn't it wouldn't shock me a hundred percent either. But um, I, you know, I don't, but, I don't even imagine. I don't even think she necessarily wants to leave because her name value as Sasha Banks in doing the things that she's already able to do means so much more than if she has to you know, leave and then all of a sudden she's Mercedes, you know, because she I know she has an idea of, of what's after wrestling and, you know, you, you utilizing she loves wrestling, but also being able to utilize wrestling in order to do other things without that name. Uh, I think that might be a little bit harder for her. A little, you know, but I mean, her credits when she does screen roles is Mercedes, not as Sasha. So, um, you know, she's I don't I don't whatever, you know. If she wants to be an actress, um, I think in the long run, in the long run, it, the name the name will open a few doors. But in the long run, if she makes it or not, it's going to be on her talent. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, whatever. But, um, you know, if she doesn't want to leave, then she, sh you know, she should have not walked out. I don't know what like, you know, of course, in time they will bring her back. And when they bring her back, it'll get a giant pop um, and all that. But you know, at first and, but as far as like, will Vince push her ahead of people who he, who haven't walked out, mm, you know, probably no. So the, I think an interesting comparison because they're basically, according to your thing uh, that, that you wrote about Roman Reigns uh contenders for his title, Riddle and Orton look to be the next two. Now you said, you know, things can change uh, at any yeah, point. Well, I mean, it's funny. It's funny because, you know, one of the I, things about this, you know, like when they do creative, um, like, you know, they, 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 they sit there, they have an idea and then they, they, they do it over and over. You know, it's like, like you'll see something on SmackDown and then they'll do the exact same angle on Raw. And essentially that's probably where the women's thing came from is we're doing it with the men. We got no ideas. You know, I mean, like the one thing is, is they got no ideas. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> They got no ideas. We, we've let's establish that. I mean, people who are going like, you know, like um, that, uh, you know, like, well, they had no ideas for 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 them. You know, they have nobody ready. They have no ideas for them. They're putting them in this thing. True. 100 percent true. But they got no ideas for anybody. So it's just like that's just the booking there. And it's like and I'm not defending the book. You know, the, if you want to criticize the booking there. Yes. But it's been that way for years. And that's just that's just the nature of WWE. That like they may plan some big things ahead of time, but it's week by week and Vince changes things anyway. And the writers may come up with something and Vince will change it the week after. And and storylines are, are, you know, shifted and whatever. And they end up never, you know, I don't say never, but but very often not making sense. That's WWE. You know, I mean, if that's when you sign up, you know that. Um, so it's going to be interesting, you know, especially Naomi. What's interesting with Naomi is, is that like, um, you know, I don't see her wanting to leave WWE and go to AEW. Sasha, I have no clue what she wants to do. Um, you know, I just don't know. I mean, does she want to just get out of wrestling? If she wants to get out of wrestling, you know, she can she can get out of wrestling, you know, I mean, you know, just and do and, and that. I mean, the only reason they would freeze her like they would unfreeze her, I'm sure. If she just goes, I'm going to retire, and they go like, if you sign a thing that you can't go to AEW, we'll unfreeze you. Well, that could that happen? Yeah, of course. That's what they did with Brock. You know what I mean? It's like, we'll let you do this, but they didn't want Brock going to TNA, which is funny in hindsight. But, <laughs> but that's why they've suspended Brock forever, you know, and 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 made him sign a seven year non compete so he wouldn't go to TNA, you know, and you know he ended up going to New Japan, which they didn't think about, and then they tried to hold it to it, and the judge just goes like. You can't stop him from going to New Japan. You know, they, they, you know, so when Brock walked out on them, not in the exact, he didn't walk out on, um, 
you know, he didn't walk out in the middle of the show, but Brock quit the company, you know, like whatever it was a year into a seven year deal and just said, like, I'm done, you know, and um, and they tried, you know, the, the, the one with Brock was is that, you know, Brock challenged, um, you know, their non-compete. And instead of getting a ruling against it, you know, they just, you know, kind of like dropped that part, um, you know, so. You know, even though Brock Brock actually signed Brock actually signed when he when Brock quit to get his release, he signed something that said that um, he would not work in pro wrestling for the next six years. OK, and it also would have included he, he could not um, like it was even more than pro wrestling, like like there were entertainment aspects he couldn't do. And there were um, like he couldn't he couldn't legally based on what they made him sign. He couldn't have done MMA. Um, he couldn't have gone to New Japan. Um, there's there's roles he couldn't have taken. But he said to get the release. But they allowed him to try the NFL. That was what they allowed. OK, so he had the release to go and try to play in the NFL. And then he didn't you know, he didn't make the NFL and they wanted him to play in Europe and he didn't want to play in Europe and learn the game. He didn't want to move to Europe. So he just sat out and did anything. And then new Japan made him a big offer and he just took it, even though he had signed the thing saying he couldn't, and they tried to take him to court. And then they realized that there is no way this judge is going to, you know, allow them to keep him from wrestling in Japan. You know what I mean? I mean, that's even though he had signed saying he wouldn't. So they sort of dropped it. And there was another aspect too, where um, he was going to come back. And then they said, you know, he, he had a million dollar year deal. They said, but he's not worth a million to come back. He can come back and we'll sign him, you know, but we're not going to sign him for a million dollars because he's tarnished. <laughs> so at that point, the judge was just like, wait a minute, you want to hold him to a contract, but then you don't want to pay him on the contract. And that's when the whole thing kind of fell apart and they went to New Japan and he wasn't happy in New Japan either. So he quit New Japan and then he ended up in MMA and then he got so big in MMA that WWE brought him back for, you know, multiple times, five times the money that they didn't want to pay him before. So the the reason why I brought that up is because if if I am thinking about this from Naomi and, and Sasha's point of view, the argument could be, yeah, Riddle and Orton can be set up guys for, for Roman. He needs contenders. But them losing to Roman, they're going to go back to this really popular tag team. Randy Orton can do no wrong in that company. He's always going to be pushed. But you could, you could, from their viewpoint, go, okay, you guys are going to, you know, you're, you're going to be the setup for, for these champions and they're going to win and then you're going to go back to do the tag team thing. But if you've been sort of promised that this tag team thing is going to be really interesting and really creative and you're going to be on both shows X, Y, and Z, and it hasn't happened. And it probably won't. Then you're just going to go back to where you were before. So you get nothing out of that. Whereas Orton and Riddle are going to be completely fine. Well, they'll be fine to a degree. I mean, Naomi's better off than she was. Sasha, you know, I mean, Sasha could go in there with Ronda, and if she has a hell of a match with Ronda, she ups her her standing. If she has a shitty match with Ronda, you know, of course it hurts. Um, you know, I mean, losing a shitty match is never good. Losing a great match helps you. You know, but, if it's a great, if it's if it's done the right, you know, it's a great match. But yeah, I mean, as far as going back to the tag team, that depends on them getting tag teams ready. And yeah, I got no confidence in that. Yeah, getting, I mean, it's like it's like doing business for the sake of doing business, but in doing business if you're less over than before you're doing business it doesn't make that much sense either it seems like it's a complete I don't think they would, lack I don't, of lack of trust and faith with, I don't with think, their creative I don't I, I don't think either of them would have been less less over being positioned in a strong singles match um unless they had a bad match and if they had a bad match or they were screwed on time you know and go okay you're going to lose to Ronda in 5 minutes you know but see that's if they go in there with that OK, but they didn't know that that hasn't even been discussed. But if they go in there with, OK, Sasha, you're losing to Ronda in five minutes at that point, her getting really, really mad. I'd have a lot more sympathy for her because then it's just like uh, you really are an afterthought. They don't respect you. Um, but that they never said that. You know, it's like if they go, you're going to lose to Ronda in 20 minutes. Now work out a great match. 
that's great. That should help her a lot because she's going to be focused a lot more than in a freaking four minute tag team match, or if it's on the pay-per-view, a seven minute tag team match. So she has more time to, to, to look good and everything like that. And, um, so, but we haven't gotten there. We don't know what was going to happen other than the end result and the end result we would have known anyway, because, you know, obviously in their minds, the big match is Ronda Rousey and Charlotte Flair and building up to something there. And they, they had a hole in the schedule because she starts, you know, they don't want to do it to death just yet. They're probably saving it for whatever show, you know, one of the stadium shows and all that. And, um, you know, eventually they get to um, Ronda and Becky, which is the, probably the WrestleMania match or was. I mean, it was the plan. You know, obviously, we got another year to botch up that plan. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, like, the, you know, I mean, I, it, it's, it's the, you know, it could have been, it, it could have been much better for her. It could have been much worse for her. We don't know the answer yet. So walking out before we know the answer, I don't know if, if um, you know, somebody on the board just goes, you know, they could have just done a tag match where you put um, Bianca Belair and Ronda Rousey against um, Naomi and Sasha Banks and Naomi and Sasha Banks beat them in a tag team title match. Um, and then you've got the tag team titles over and you get the singles titles over. You know what? That's a great idea. Yeah, I actually you know, like that a lot. That's a great idea. It's a fantastic idea. And you get the tag team division over and the tag team titles over. Um, you know, I mean, you could. But um, and, and if they said no, you would you would, you know, to that idea, if they suggested that idea and then said no to it. No, well, even then I would I, I, I go, OK, that's mm, he doesn't really want to put the tag team the tag team titles are bullshit to him which they probably are and they um, should literally be so but, open but, to doing stuff like that because they have all of these pay-per-views and no real main events for these pay-per-views they have too many pay-per-views and they don't get new people over and so yeah they they and they don't want to do the same match to death so yeah things like that but like um nobody brought that up if somebody had brought that up actually it's that's the best idea of all yeah but they didn't so we we're stuck with people who didn't bring up that one which was the best answer to, which was the, the best answer of all of them but neither side brought it up so neither side thought of it and it's like whatever i mean so that's what happened okay so let's go back to the these smackdown quotes from michael cole now you've been covering vince for gosh 40 years now about or so 40 years. 40, yeah, 40 years. So the, the you also had a, a quote by Tony Storm in, in The Observer, and I think there's some r relation here a, a, as to the optics play when, when stuff like this happens. So Tony Storm um, said, that she's talking about the angle with Charlotte. She said they wanted to do this whole angle where it was like they were going to rip my shirt and I'd be embarrassed in my underwear, I guess. When you're asked if you're comfortable... If you're to do that, and it's like literally people are being fired every single week, it's like, well, yeah, I guess I'm comfortable with that. Yeah. Isn't isn't this entire thing the shaming, the pulling the the merch, the removing social pages and all that stuff? This is literally just a hey guys, this can happen to you if you're unhappy, and just you know, don't and, test and me. Absolutely, one hundred percent. That's why everyone walks on eggshells, and it's why it can be a miserable place to work. And you know that signing up, you know, it's like it's like you know that. Like, look, she had a problem before, and believe me, I the Sasha Banks thing with with Bailey when they took the belts and put them on the Iconics. Yes. Okay. So I remember when that happened, and it was just like the Iconics were this one note iconic. You know, thing, yeah. that all they were. It was kind of cute little thing. Someone's and gonna Sasha, get that drop. You know that, right? What? Someone's gonna record that drop and put it in a little song. Right, right. And I, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I know, I know. And then try to make them mad at me and everything or whatever. But no, 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 no. Just the sound drop of you saying iconic. Someone's gonna okay. make a song out of that. I, I, okay. I, I, I tell them to do it. Okay. Well, here's the th here's the thing. So, so, okay. In that situation, and I knew it then. Okay. They were 100% right because they were like, they really did make those belts mean something. They were I mean, like one of the MVPs of the pandemic absolutely. era for WWE. Absolutely. Absolutely. They, um, 
but that that was but but the thing is 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 but those belts when they were put in they they were nothing and those two made the belts and then they took the belts away from them because it was wrestlemania and they wanted title switches at wrestlemania and because you know it seemed cute people thought the iconics were over a little bit and and whatever and then sasha you know basically quit you know and came back but um you know she's re she re-upped she kissed their ass you know the whole bit um later even though that went through but it's like it's you know she you know like they, they you know it, it, it was bad judgment on their part in the long run i mean you could have done that okay you could have done that title switch that's not necessarily the bad thing because they can always win it back but what they lost it and then she left and then then they couldn't win it back if you're going to leave right so there's a that's a little bit on both but i don't but i don't know if they had told them you're going to lose it here you're going to win it back in two months you know then lose it that's not a big deal you know it doesn't hurt the belts or anything you're getting them back but if it was the idea that you're not going to get the belts back and you made those belts and 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 it was actually like a, a really good team that was a big mistake on wwe's part because they were like legitimate champions and i know you can't hold belts forever and all that but um you know you can hold them a lot longer in a lot of cases or you can have multiple reigns and it's not the end of the world and it's often um you know, if you're a great team, having multiple reigns is, is not a bad thing either. Um, it makes the team stronger in the long run, you know, that, that they become the perennial superstar tag team rather than just a tag team. Mm -hmm. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.